you guys all for very much for coming. This is Books, Blogs, and the Bird, in case you uh, thought you were supposed to be somewhere else. Um, so that, that's what session this is. Um, unlike some other speakers, I decided not to use a PowerPoint today because I wanted this to be kind of interactive among <coughs> ourselves. I wanted to allow time for discussion. And usually, you know, I'm a writer. Um, I focus more on words rather than the technology. And whenever I use a PowerPoint, it, something always gets screwed up. And I'm waiting for somebody to come and fix something and whatever. And the fact that this is streaming live is just about enough pressure for me. Mm -hmm. So um, so we don't have any fancy graphics. We just have us. And by us, I mean I'm Melissa Furman. And my website is Melissa Furman. Dot com, and that's F-I-R-M-A-N.com. Um, I also have two of Philadelphia, uh, Philadelphia I'm a Philly girl, uh, two of Pittsburgh's most exciting authors with us today. We have Lori Kuser, uh, who is the author of What Happens on Sunday, and her it is um, about the Steelers. Um, so I know we, uh, we had a Steelers team. Right, right. <laughs> Back when we had a Steelers Back team. one game. <laughs> so, hopefully, you know, there will be something happening on Sunday at some point um, with, with them. And we also have J.J. Hensley, who is the author of Resolve, which is a thriller about the Pittsburgh Marathon. Um, so, um, so, I'm really glad that they have both decided to take some time out of their Saturday to be with us here at PodCam uh, today. What we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about book blogging, the publishing industry, and the, towards the end of the session, we're going to have a little bit of a panel discussion with Lori and JJ and um, open it up to questions near the end. So hopefully this will be something for everybody. I wanted to get a sense, too, um, at the beginning, how many of you already consider your blog, your website, your podcast, whatever you do, to be a book blog? Anybody? Elizabeth? Okay. Yep. Okay, so a handful of people. How many of you want your site or blog or podcast to be more of a book blog? You're interested in reviewing books. You're interested in doing more along those lines, maybe showcasing your writing, may, maybe doing more of that. Okay, so a little bit more of that. How many of you are aspiring authors who want to promote your writing? and get more into in touch with Pittsburgh's bloggers to learn ways of doing that. Okay, so we have kind of a mix. Okay, just so I know who I'm talking to. I'm, the goal of the session is to really give something to everybody, to give a kind of a lay of the land in terms of what the book blogging community does and how you can effectively outreach um, to book bloggers here as well as nationwide, because we're a really big community, but we're also a small, insular community, and one that's very niche and very. Um, there is a book blog for really every genre that is, is there, out there. A little bit about me. Um, I've been blogging since August of 2008, so that is about five years now, a little bit over. And my first blog um, was the Betty and Boo Chronicles. And it started as kind of a mommy blog. And at that point, we were living in Delaware. Like I said, we're originally from Philadelphia. So at that point, we were like a grandiose two hours away from my mother-in-law. And so she was texting and calling constantly about wondering, you know, how are you know, your kids, how, you know, what they do today. And I was like, oh, my God, you know, like, stop with this. So I thought I would go start with a blog and tell her, you know, like, the charming little things that they did. That got old after a while. And I, I then discovered that there, were, there was this community of people who were online, and they were talking about books, and they were reviewing them for fun. And I thought, that is the coolest damn thing I have ever read, because... I love that, you know. So a book that I read or just read, there was somebody online who was talking about it, and I could interact with them, comment on their post, and I, I was in heaven. Okay, my husband thought I was insane. 
I mean, he thought I was absolutely nuts. Uh, so I started doing that. And just like how some people, you know, watch reality shows, I mean, I was reading book blogs, and there was like, this whole new world. And what started happening during those five years was publishing started changing. So, you know, with the explosion of Amazon and with the explosion of e-readers, publishers started noticing bloggers. They started noticing that there was this community out there. And at the same time, there was also, you know, the erosion of book reviews in the, new the newspapers. You know, advertis uh, advertisers were pulling out from their um, from the advertise the newspaper space, so they really weren't dedicating that much space. Now, I have to give a plug to the Post Gazette because we are fortunate here in Pittsburgh to have a you know a wonderful um, you know ally in Tony Norman, who I'm not saying this because I review for the Post Gazette, but they dedicate space for you know books on several times a week, and that's really unusual with metropolitan newspapers um, in this day and age. So, um, but a lot of people aren't doing that, and a lot of magazines aren't doing that, and they're expecting bloggers to take up the slack. So, they've gotten a little bit more savvy now about their outreach. To, to bloggers. So what you have and you still have is a business that's changing every day. And the people who are savvy in social media um, have, have been and continue to be at the forefront of what this, this is a revolution. Now, I don't have a publishing background. Um, what I am is somebody who loved to write and had opinions about what books that I was reading about. And, you know, I grew up... Um, uh, writing a novel when I was 15, and I grew up to be a fundraiser. So I worked in nonprofits for um, my whole life, and in uh, Philly, and then Delaware, and now in Pittsburgh. Uh, I'm also someone who loves to read, so I read about 75 books a year. Like I said, some people read, you know, some people watch TV. I think. Um, so, and now what this also kind of provided was a chance to interact with all. And, you know, it was when I started reviewing the books, when I started, um, hey, when I started reviewing the books, sometimes the authors would actually comment back. And that was like getting a letter from God, you know? <laughs> it was like, holy shit, you actually, you, you, you read my blog post about your book. Um, like, and that was... It was like the Red Sea part, and then it was it was awesome. It was awesome. Um, so, and that 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 was just that is just the coolest thing. I mean, the the fact that I have JJ and Laura here is kind of like girlish to me. That you know, still like the five year old in me who wrote the letter to you know her favorite author is still kind of like giddy that you know this is cool. Like this is my idea. Of fun. Um, Okay, so because and the idea is is that this is the same sort of thing as when like a food blogger discovers a favorite restaurant. You want to tell everyone about this book. You want to tell everyone that this is so damn good that you want to share this with the world. And that's what the power of book blogging does. So Okay, so five tips for the qualities of an engaging book blog. And I know this is where, like, the PowerPoint stuff. Thank you so much. Why well, they had it on here? You rock. Thank you. Okay. So we can all breathe. We can. Okay. Oh my God, that is so. I feel like we have to. Like... Okay. All right. Jesus, that feels so much better. Anyway, I feel like I have to rush now, so like we're not all going to, you know, expire and be like paramedics and you know, whatever. Um, so some qualities of an engaging book blog, um, and this is, I'm going to put this all on my website. I'm going to wrap this up in a post later on today. So this kind of makes up for my you know, lack of technical knowledge and the fact that I was finishing this up at 12:15 last night. 
Um, so I'll, I'll summarize all this so you don't have to feel like this is going to listen. Um, don't talk books all the time. I, there's, there's a lot of blogs that, you know, just it's review after review after review. And, you know, that, that's great. And you might think, well, that's what a book blog does. But we want to know the person behind you. Um, we're a small community, the, um, the book blogging community, but we know each other. And we know each other's families, and we know what's going on, and we know about their lives and everything. So, you know, we're kind of tight, and we know each other pretty well. And that's because, you know, we write more about books. We have, we have more than that going on in our lives. Most of us do more than one thing. So, you know, it's the same with us. When you're reviewing a book, don't engage in personal attacks on the author. That's become kind of a thing lately, and it's gotten kind of ugly. Whereas there's been reviewers who, particularly like on Goodreads, sometimes on Amazon, they've attacked the author in, in a way where some bloggers are afraid to say anything critical about the book. Um, there's, there are some bloggers who will not review anything at all that they don't like. They'll only review the good stuff. That's kind of a personal choice. I kind of sort of straddle the line. I mean, you don't really want to come across as a critic, but there's a nice way and a not so nice way of saying, you know, I really didn't like this. You know, um, you know to say that you didn't connect with the character or the writing wasn't strong enough is different than, you know, exchange, engaging in inconsequent threat and threats. Be careful about using too many memes. Um, the book blogging community loves memes and features. We have all kinds of challenges and, and things that we, you can get involved in. Um, and there's fun virtual events like 24-hour readathons where we comment on different um, pages. Um, but, you know, it's easy to get caught up in that, but no one wants to see the same things over and over again. If you're stuck with content ideas, you know, relate your posts to something that's topical, either in your town or whatever. Like I just did a post last week about the giant rubber duck, um, and because my mom always um, left me a book about ducks in my Easter basket when I was little. So it, you know, it was the Little Quack and Gertie the Duck. You know, so I did a post about that, and I also highlighted an old review I did about Street Gang, which is a nonfiction book about Sesame Street. So, you know, I just recycled that review and just said, you know, you know, and there's, you know, this book, you can recycle your content as well. Um, make your reviews personal. This is not your fifth grade book report, okay? So, you know, draw something out of the book that you can relate to. Um, my son has Asperger's. So, you know, if the character has Asperger's or autism, I'm going to comment on that in a book. Uh, I'm going to comment on how real realistic that is. If the book is set in Philadelphia and you mention the fact you call a hoagie a submarine, I'm calling you out on it. Okay? If it's something is set in Pittsburgh and you misname a bridge, then I'm going to say so. You know? I mean, it's so it, you know, bring, bring part of your personality into it. Um, this is where I'm going to try. I'm also going to bring in. Uh, JJ and Lori into this a little bit too, and ask them to chime in on this because, um, and I'm going to give you the people who are aspiring authors and who are talking, of, who are thinking about doing book, some ideas on pitching your book to book bloggers. Um, get to know which book blogs review books that are similar to yours. If you have a book that is similar to, hey Sue, how are you? Um, <laughs> She probably hates that I like single her out, but um, if you have a book that is similar to, you know, the help or whatever, you want to know who has reviewed books, who has reviewed the help, and you want to know who has reviewed them favorably. So you want to Google that. Um, I'll, I'll point out, like, you know, like Britt has a book out about happiness. Now she she want to like know who has reviewed books about about that and lifestyle and whatever. Same thing with like JJ. You know, he did a lot of research on who had um, who has reviewed mysteries or crime and you know who is in his genre, right? So I would 
imagine that that has, was a big part of his marketing strategy, and he'll elaborate more on that, unless you want to talk about that. Wait. Uh, no, no uh, Resolve is set with the, uh, it's not a, running, a book about running, but it's set against the backdrop of the Pittsburgh Marathon, so I knew the target demographic <coughs> would be the running community as well, and there are, if you think there's a lot of book blogs out there, you should see the running blogs. <laughs> um, there's a lot of them. So I, uh, one of the things I did was contact a lot of running uh, bloggers out there, and uh, my publisher had created a certain amount of bound galleys or advanced copies to send out, and I would offer bound galleys out even before the book was published in hopes of getting some advanced reviews, uh, not just to book bloggers, but to uh, the running community. And uh, you know, they would review it. Uh, sometimes I would uh, jump in for a QA and a uh, after the review. Um, it, now, if, in your case, if you review a book and you really hate it, don't ask to do a QA. and a um, <laughs> Authors don't want to hear the question, what were you thinking? That was awful. <laughs> um, so uh, that made it a little more interactive, and I think a lot of people did enjoy that. And then maybe they would run a giveaway for the, uh, the hard co hardcover edition. So it can be a continuous thing, but uh, yeah, I, I, I talked to the running bloggers, book bloggers, mystery, you know, myth people in the mystery thriller genre. Uh, and also just the local community, uh, Pittsburgh, uh, with different blogs, not just not just book blogs, but anything of interest. Uh, because it really, chances are that you guys will communicate better as bloggers than actual authors will. Um, we're terrible. I've, I've now discovered this uh, in the uh, the months that my book has been out, that uh, authors, it's a, some people, some authors treat each other like we're competitors. Um, and trust me, there's, a, it's, I have no idea why that is, but um, you know, authors don't communicate about different events that are going on. And uh, you say, "Hey, would you like to to get in on this this book club, or would you like to get in on this book event?" And sometimes it's almost like, you know, "What's your angle here?" I'm angle. I just don't want to be sitting there. Three people show up, and I'd rather be fifty people show up because there's ten authors there. So, so uh, I think that's one of the strategies I did was just to hit everything that was possibly relevant, because right. then you get different audience members, too. I don't want people who just want mystery thriller books. Right. I want people who, you know, like running, uh, going out and doing fitness things, or just people who just want a different type of book. Um, right. Or Pittsburgh. Right. Know, and that, that's a good point, too, but, um, that I'm glad you brought up, because you did hit uh, a lot of running things, and a lot of JJ's posts on Facebook are about running, and that I wouldn't really think about in doing. So there's a lot of cross-promotion that way as well and reaching a new market too. Lori, um, think to... Yeah, I guess just building on what he was saying, I wouldn't, if if you have a book, I wouldn't limit myself just to like seeking out book blogs, like JJ said. And I think like also, some people don't feature books on their on their blog, but if, they're, if it's something like relevant to your book, they might be willing to have you do a guest blog. And that's, that's sometimes, you, Sometimes a guest blog or you're writing maybe something on their topic, that's an even better way to get people introduced to your writing and your book than it is just a post about your book. Right, because in that that seems a little bit too much of a sell -y sell kind of thing. Like, right. yeah, that seems to be, you know, that, oh, the, I have, you know, my favorite author and she just happens to have a book and buy it, you know, whereas that, as a blogger, you know, you're, you're kind of saying, you know, Hey, I have this expert here, and she has some great information to share, and I would love to introduce you to her. And you know, so that's a way, like you know, in the previous session and in the sessions to come, a way of generating content, of keeping your content fresh. Um, do that. There is Britt. Sorry, that's okay. Go ahead. That kind of resonates with things like the thing about going to book bloggers. Are passionate about books and blog readers a lot of times are like yeah. And so, have you noticed as far as what gives you a better rate of return? Like, what sells more books? Like, personally, I've noticed from, like, I don't know that I've noticed too much of a difference, like, between being, like, featured on a book blog versus another blog. Like, the biggest, unfortunately, like, the biggest rate of return is always on, like, a post event. Uh -huh. um, I had a review in the Pittsburgh Magazine. Like, because you think like you get your name out there with the blogs, and I think that's really important. But unfortunately, it's still those big marquee items that you're going to get the most. Mm -hmm. But with the blogs, you get more name recognition, I think. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. in the community. Yeah, the blogs stay out there for a long time, yeah. you know, and the, you, if you Google an author, those are the things that come up. Um, the, the biggest returns on investment that I had, and I say investment even though it was, it was free on my part, was uh, uh, actually Laurie just said that she had read, read something that I had submitted to a free circular that went around uh, to the area, and uh, you know, it's Cranberry Life, and what would you say it was in Robinson Township? It was in Robinson Township. Right, yeah, it's Robinson Township Community Magazine or something like that. and. It, but um, the patch network, AOL patch network, there was a write-up in the Cranberry uh, patch on my book because I, I live in Cranberry Township. And I, I didn't think anything of it other than, okay, yeah, I'll do this interview and that'll be that. And out of all the stuff that had gone out there, uh, a Pittsburgh Post-Gazette review and uh, uh, you know, Publishers Weekly, stuff like that, you know, I, I didn't hear anything about that. Um, I really didn't hear much about the Post-Gazette review, actually, um, even though it was a positive review. But uh, then all of a sudden, the Cranberry Patch thing goes out, and I don't even know. What, I didn't even know what the Patch Network was at the time. Next thing you know, I'm going to the dentist, and the dental hygienist has my mouth open, and she's like, "Hey, hey, I read your article on the Cranberry <laughs> Patch." I'm like, "Okay, it's great." And uh, and then you know, I go down to get my car serviced, and somebody says, "Oh, uh, you know, you're the guy in the Cranberry Patch," or the and then it spreads to the other Patch Network. So it's the weirdest things uh, that you find. But when you ever, when, whenever you Google an author, if you Google either of us, you'll probably find uh, it's blogs. the blogs that yeah. really resonate because they stay out there forever, um, good or bad. Yeah, and from a blogger perspective too, I mean, we will continue to get hits on the strangest things. I mean, you know, JJ did a guest post on my blog. Um, he had contacted me to just to kind of connect with me, not to. Not to have me do a review of his book because he knows that I'm not really a mystery, you know, thriller kind of girl, you know, because you know, and, and his book wouldn't be right for my blog. But you know, we happen to you know attend the same church, and so we were like, hey, you know, great that we both connect and we're both authors and whatever. Um, so I said, hey, would you want to do a guest post, you know? And I was being, and then this was right around the time of the. Um, around the Boston Marathon. So I'm like, okay. I'm like, hey, this would be great. Why don't you do on a, book, a post on why, you know, how it is marketing a book about the Pittsburgh Marathon around the same time as the Boston Marathon. Everyone was asking him to do that. And so, you know, I felt like kind of an ass for asking him about to do that, you know. And so, but it turned out to be a great, great guest post. And it was very insightful. I get, I probably get hits on that every week, you know, and so, and I feel good about that because, you know, I'm not, um, you know, I, I do a little bit of literary PR, but like that, that to me is my way of like helping my friend, you know, and promoting his book and, and all that. Okay, so back to pitching your book to um, Ripple Club. So this is all about making sure that your book, your story resonates with the, the blog that you're pitching it to. And there is a blog and niche for whatever you're writing. There are blogs that review only steampunk. There's blogs that review Christian fiction. There are blogs that review historical fiction. There are blogs that review everything or just teen paranormal. They're out there. You Google them. You. Um, but the key thing is read the blog. Okay. Um, don't just like pitch them and see. You know, and to read them and just to you know, just. The pitch them. When you pitch them, um, we'll, we'll get into the actual pitch of it in a few minutes. There are actual conferences um, for specific types of book bloggers. There's one, if you write children's fiction, there's a conference called KidLitCon uh, that happens. And you can, you can Google that as well. And I'll put that on uh, in the post that I'll do as a wrap up post, too. But it's a conference just for bloggers who blog about kids. Children's literature. Uh, there is Book Expo America, which is a huge, huge trade show in New York City um, at the end of, uh, like, around Memorial Day weekend every year. There is open to the public, and part of it, um, it, there's a fee to it, but you know, you can go up to publishers. So you go up to like Simon and Schuster. You say you, you're a blogger, and they, there are free books for the taking. Or, and the expectation is that you review them on your blog, but you know you can come home. The people like come out, come home with like suitcases full of. It's like Nirvana, 
for the, but as part of that, there's also a book blogger convention, uh, which sounds real geeky and nerdy, and you know, I've been to this twice. Um, it's so fun. Um, but if you're into this, there's some real marketing potential, and there's some real marketing potential for authors, and also there are businesses that have sprouted up among this as well, because uh, there are there's a book um, reviewing site um, called TLC Book Tours that I review for, um, where they they have it, they have a tour. It's like a virtual book tour. So it's just sending it all out around the country, which you know, publishers don't do anymore. They will specifically do the work of finding the book blogs that um, find that are the best match for your book or you. And a lot of authors have had really good success. One and hi, um, what is? I wanted to also give a pitch out to some local Pittsburgh bloggers too. Um, you know, if one of the best known uh, Pittsburgh bloggers, she couldn't be here today, um, is my friend Tiffany Harkle Road. She writes uh, Tiffany's Bookshelf. That's Tiffany's Bookshelf. Blogspot.com, and she is an absolute reading machine. I don't think that there is a week that goes by that she does not review like at least two books. Um, so she's at a wedding, I think, or something out of town. So she is really bummed that she couldn't be there. But I need to give a shout out to her because she is among like the doyen of Pittsburgh bloggers. Um, yeah, and yeah, she's a, I think she. Oh. What's that? Oh yeah, yeah. She she just like you know one of the things that we get as um, as book bloggers is we get advanced reading copies. We're not allowed to sell them and we're not allowed to donate them um, to libraries. So you know it's kind of like well, what do we do with it? She is, has become this craft machine and she is blogging about. She's creating Christmas ornaments. Um, she ought to sell them at a made market or something. Um, but she resurfaced her entire living room floor and steps with the pages of all the books that she got from it, it she's documented on her blog. It is phenomenal what she's done. Um, um, I was gonna say Tiffany's also if, if you're gonna put your book on Amazon Tiffany, I think she's a top five hundred reviewer. Mm -hmm. So she cross posts all of her um, book reviews. <coughs> mm -hmm. So a a review from her on Amazon that really bumps up your mm -hmm. book. Yeah, she is. She is phenomenal, and she she's a friend of mine, and she is a very fair reviewer as well, too. I mean, she is really good about that. Lori has a blog, yinzareading.com, right? And um, and uh, JJ, do you have a blog yet? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I I blog a little bit on Goodreads, <laughs> my Goodreads okay. page, which links to my Amazon page, but I normally do guest posts because that way I feel like I'm. Not completely liable for whatever madness comes out of my mouth. So okay. It's really somebody else's fault posting it. I just said it. Fair so. enough. And that that goes back to the point. Like you know, I mean, pick your pick your channel. Pick your media that works. Maybe Facebook is your media. Maybe blogging is your media. Maybe Twitter is your media. Because there is also uh, the Pittsburgh Novel Blogspot com, which is also which is some one that's fairly new to me that Lori told me about. It is. It's amazing. It's, it is amazing. You want to talk yeah, about it? Yeah, well, it's actually one of my former professors, and he it's he calls it an annotated bibliography, and he basically like any book or any work of fiction, <laughs> like comic books or anything that has a Western Pennsylvania setting, he has um, posted about it, and it is this amazing, unbelievable resource. Like he must just. I can't believe how many books there are out there about what you It is it is phenomenal. Yeah, it goes back to the 1700s. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, like, it's it like goes, 18th century, yeah. 19th century, everything. It goes way back. I mean, he has he's doing a series right now on the Johnstown flood, and he's come up with like two dozen books um, on the Johnstown flood. I mean, you know, I think of that. I think David McCall, you know, and yeah, so that, and, that's a good one, like, as an author or a reader, because yeah. I never knew about a lot of books that he was. It's um, the Pittsburgh novel .blogspot.com. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that one was fairly new to me, and but that that's just pure fun. Um, but also, too, as a researcher, I mean, that, that's fun. Uh, also, give a plug out to Karen, the small press librarian. She... Um, Runs uh, 
the small press, and she features small book, small press books, books that are published by small presses. So she, hers is also really good. And um, and one that I happen to love is um, Eleven Stock that is um, written by uh, staff members at the Carnegie Library. So that that is uh, that that's also what we And um, they the library also has several other ones. They have these. Yeah. Eleven stack, and, and that is eleven stack wordpress .com. Also, uh, and not all of these you know, do books for reviews, but they're they're good to read to get a sense of how other people write about books, how they talk about books, the, the language they use, the content, and all that. Um, a lot of book bloggers have a book review policy on their blogs. And that tells you what their you know, time frame is. It's not unusual for a lot of book bloggers to be booked well into 2014 right now. Um, do, you can't you know, pitch us a book and say, you know, could you have this read and reviewed by the 1st of November? It's not going to happen. Um, we have you know, jobs, responsibilities, kids, work. You know, it, it's just not going to happen. So lead times of sometimes six months sometimes a year is not unheard of at this point. Um, that's why a personal connection is usually helpful. Um, so I'm starting to get a lot of requests like, I have a friend of a friend who wrote a book and you know, could you kind of make room for it? And I'm kind of denying a lot of requests right now. So, you know, to be cognizant of that. So, Read the review policy. Um, there are certain some people don't accept self-published books. Um, some people do. It all depends. Pitch us over email. Um, use our first names, not the name of our blog. When I had the uh, my blog was the Betty and Boo Chronicles, I got more emails. Dear Betty and Boo, <laughs> dear Miss Chronicles. Okay, <laughs> no. Okay, Melissa. Okay, I mean it was. You know, it was in my profile. Hi, I'm Melissa Furman. You know, I still get dear blogger. No, if we don't respond, okay, if we're not your employee, okay, don't hound us. Did you get my email? Did you get? Are you interested in my book? No, no, we're not. We're okay. We're, it's just not a right fit. If we respond saying it's not a right fit, don't say. Do you think you'll reconsider? Do you? You know, when will it be a right fit? No. Okay. It's not a right fit. We're trying to let you down easily. Okay. Authors um, should be familiar with that phrase. Exactly. <laughs> right. If they've gone through the agent and publisher process, exactly. not the right fit is very popular. Exactly. <laughs> you know, don't be an asshole like the other guy said. You know, earlier. I mean, it's it, like we're trying to work with you. Okay. Um. Make sure to don't overdo it with the flattery. Your blog is the best blog I've ever read. Oh my god, your reviews are such top notch. I you are the perfect blogger to review my book. Cut the shit, okay? No, I mean that, it, it, that's not going to not going to get you anywhere, okay? Um, make sure to offer the blogger a free copy of your book. We're, we're poor, all right? <laughs> I mean we're not being paid for this. I mean, I've, I've had a lot of, of authors say, you know, you can go to your Barnes and Noble and here's some back quest, you know, you live in Cranberry, you know, you can go down. Are you kidding? You know, I mean, you know, no. You know, um, we are, you can download it here at Amazon and I love you and I want to support you and everything, but, you know, my kids got it. Um, so, give me a free download, give me a, you know, a free copy or whatever. Again. Read the blog. Um, okay, so again, you know, I want to um, to turn it over to to JJ and Lori. Um, we have about 25 minutes left. Uh, 20, yeah, about 20 minutes, five minutes left. And I want to turn it over to you guys for questions for them, questions for me. I have some as well in case you guys are kind of shy and quiet. But I want to. Get some feedback as well. I have my phone to go off at um, 11:45 to give us 15 minutes uh, left in case there wasn't a clock in the room. But um, 
but anyway, so just, just some feedback from the audience for her discussion, and then we can. I have some other wrap-up questions that we can ask. Anybody? Um, what is a good, what are, say, three great spots for an author to build a following through social networks? Probably a good question for us because I, I think you use Twitter more, right? Yeah. <coughs> I, I use for, Facebook more. For me, it's been blogging and Twitter. Or probably talk to you. I think Facebook is really good. I don't, I don't post that much on Facebook. I have more, like, Facebook, I keep more with my personal, like, it's more clothes, it's just for family. And I use, but, yeah, I, I use Facebook. I'm a, I don't use Twitter. I have a very odd sense of humor, and it does not come across well in 140 characters or less. <laughs> Things need to be put into context. Um, so I, I use Facebook exclusively. I don't use Twitter. I use Goodreads now some, but um, uh, I have a separate author page other than my personal page. So, uh, okay. you know. Right, so you know, it says J.J. Hensley dash author, you know, fancy title. Came up with that myself, and uh, it's I, I use that, and I thought that that was a great start because I already had, um, you know, I already had a personal Facebook page with, you know, three hundred of my closest friends um, who I haven't seen in twenty years, and and you know, I immediately started the author page, and then I invited them to like it. So you know, boom, you got a a, a nice base right there for your author page. And from there, I was able, you know, people, you know, they click like or they share an article, and next thing you know, it kind of took off, and, and I could link things back to my, you know, I could go from my, my personal page to my author page and then share it, and it would go on my personal page too, so I would, uh, you know, be able to kind of put it on both pages. So I, I, found, I found Facebook and, and doing guest, guest blogs to be the most effective. Red Room? I'm not. Now, Goodreads was one I was reluctant to really get into, but I did. Uh, I, I my publisher had done a giveaway with the advanced copies before the book came out, so uh, so I kind of you know I created my profile and everything, and I was surprised that that's actually been very effective. There's a lot of people on Goodreads, a lot of different groups. Um, you know, uh, people rate books even if they don't do a full review on there, and then a lot of those people. If you click on their profiles, you see that they have a blog. That they are also on Goodreads. So I, I was surprised that I that Goodreads has been as effective as it has been. Does everyone know what that what that is? Goodreads. Okay. Does everyone hear her? She's recommending Goodreads. Red, Redroom.com. Brett had something. Uh, um, I. say that I did the same thing as you. I totally like underestimated my how much work I needed to have before the book launch. And I thought that I had enough, but I didn't. And another thing with me was I went, um, I, I thought that I was going to go with a digital only release. And then as soon as I released it, everyone said, I want a print copy. <laughs> so then I had to hurry up, and I had a print copy out within the next month. Um, but like, I'm trying to think, because some of my reviews didn't come out until almost nine months later. But I have noticed in the Post-Gazette that there, I have seen, like, books be mentioned in, like, feature articles. And I would go on and I'll look at the book. And it could be, like, from 2011. And so, so I would feel like in today's age, like, I, I would just keep trying. I I need to do that myself. Yeah, I, would, I keep trying. My book's been out since last March, and I still, yeah. I still, you know, sometimes I'll still see a, an interesting site and say, "Hey, do you want to?" You know, I'll, I'll send you a free copy or whatever, and you know, if you'd consider reviewing the book, and then they say, "Oh, I'd never heard of this," and part of me is like, "Oh, good," and then part of me like, "What do you mean you've never heard of this?" 
it's been it, it, it's been out there. It's been been you know published for a while. And I can talk from the book blogger perspective. Um, there is kind of a little bit of a trend to get away from reviewing um, the same book that everybody is talking about because you know with so many book blogs, I subscribe to. Okay, this is going to sound really nerdy. Okay about a thousand blogs. I don't read them all every day because I would never, you know, work or feed my kids or, you know, say go talk to my husband or anything else. Um, but, you know, I skim them. So if I'm seeing, you know, a dozen blogs reviewing Britt's book, which, you know, is awesome and fabulous, I'm going to look at the first two reviews and then the rest of them I'm not paying attention to. Six months down the road, if I come across the review of Britt's book, I'll be like, hey, you know, I, I remember that. That was getting a lot of buzz a little while ago. I've been meaning to pick that up. Let me see what, you know, what Sheila is talking thinking about that. So there's some re there's <coughs> some resonance to that. Um, there's there's a real pull to talk about the backlist now. And that's especially true when your second book comes out. You know, so um, don't feel that the window is closed ever. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, my phone's going off because uh, we're at 15 minutes. Okay. Uh, well, but that's okay, though. The type of block I have, I don't necessarily do. Okay. Like a blogging that they make silver cards. Okay. is for those listening at home um, is how to I think it's more of like a monetizing your blog kind of question I think that's an entirely different session um, and and I don't know whether I'm the, the right person to address that I mean there are services like passion fruit which has gone to a subscription service to do that um, I have not had much success with Amazon Associate I have yet to ever see a, a check from them um, my mother orders her books from me through Amazon Associates. She may be my only customer. Um, so, I don't know. Um, I don't know the answer to that, Paul. I, I wish I did. Um, thoughts? Like, are you looking to advertise for authors, or are you looking to, like, make money off the advertising? I guess I'm not sure about what the question is. Oh, oh yes, ma'am. You That's okay. But yeah, I mean, there are different services. There are different, you know, I mean, sponsored book reviews is a whole other ethical thing that we could spend a whole other topic on. I've delved into that a little bit. Some guy who um, has written a book on, it's from like The Amazing Race or something show that I own. We, we, we were talking about doing a, a review of his book. Um, that didn't work out. But, you know, there's different things. I think as the medium evolves, <clears throat> and I'm losing my voice, I think you'll see that. But um, I don't know what the answer is yet. Um, I don't know whether Amazon Associates is, is it. But,
since generally she would just have reviewed any other product. It's expected that the reviewer gets the product for free, right. but it's right. not going to be compensated for the exactly. review. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then I just wanted to the blogger side. Chris's question. I mean, I, I, I guess I consider my blog to be a lifestyle and regional blog, and I am not going to care about the publication date. I mean, if I'm reading a book, and I, I don't usually do the exchange of, you know, doing review that I've been asked to review. I, you know, I, I just have to do review books, whatever I'm reading. And it can be published, you know, 1930, it can be published last year. I don't really care. Um, and I think we find that bloggers who are not exclusively book bloggers are not going to care about how new it was. Exactly. And they're not going to yeah, care about exactly. the publication. You know, that, that it's been out already for three months. I think it's in particular, there's a lot of support for anybody who is local. And so if you reach out particularly to you know, bloggers who blog about the Pittsburgh region, they'll be enthusiastic about it. But you can ask them to review it next year, though, mm -hmm. you can ask them in 10 years. They're not really going to care. I don't know what the return is in sales on you know, being far out from the release date, but that's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I will say that you might have you might have more benefit with a an author who's um, had a book come out recently. Just in in yeah. insofar as if I go on Google and I Google um, my book name my, name my name and review, if I see a new review come up on a big blog site or something, I I, I might if well, if it's good I might post it on my page. If it's bad, I never yeah. saw it. Um, but I might post it on my page, which will lead people to your blog. So I can see some benefit mm -hmm. there. But then again, if I just am interested that a book took place in 1930 or was written in 1930s and and everything, I would, I would read it anyway. Yeah, I think publication dates are something that are like really important to writers, but not yeah. writers. I think yeah. so. I think that that's a good point. I mean, and even too with 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 the Post Gazette reviews. I mean, we can be sometimes. Six months behind with in that, and so that can be a little tricky too. There are two questions in the back, Sue, um, and also the gentleman sitting next to Sue in the blue also had a question too. You did? No? Mm -hmm. Okay. But um, I'll, I'll call my friend Sue. Hey. Hi. <coughs> Hi. So I have a, a talk, talk loud because I'm losing my voice. I have a blog. <coughs> Awesome blog, by the way, people. I mean, yeah. So, it, LGBTQA issues. That was what I was going to say too. Is I write about a lot of other kinds of things. So, you know, I talk about politics. I also write about politics. So, I write about buses and all that kind of. You know, so I get pitched a lot. Right. And I get pitched just all that crazy stuff. You know, dear lesbians. And also the um. Uh, the free, free item is certainly something that I see. I also do kind of nice and kind of like a different way of my reader. Uh -huh. But the piece I wanted to get into here, though, is the use of social media to get that view out there. Because my blog will be picked up, and I have a lot of people that kind of talk about it. But I'll tweet about it and Facebook about it. And Melissa, if you're very proud of our Facebook, will then say, oh, my friend's too real. And so you can, I don't think we should underestimate how viral things can be. And it's not just because they're really awesome, but it's because it's much more engaging than people have. And my friends will retweet my posts for me, or a show support for me. And then, of course, if I were written about Mary Jo's book, you know, Mary Jo's going to tweet in. And, and I, I tend to do more music reviews right now, and that's where it happens. The, the artist and the and the other, the fan meetings, the fan clubs, you know, and it's, um, it's just kind of amazing how, how viral something can be. So, it happens more on Twitter, and we can look, but I think my Facebook is a category. So, don't underestimate me. If you look at my blog and say it's a lesbian club, I'm not going to look at people that talk about public transportation. Mm -hmm. Look at the categories that I write about, the tag ladies, and I write tag them. Right, right. Lesbians ride bikes. Right. <laughs> and let, lesbians eat at restaurants. You know, lesbians run marathons. You know, I right. do a ton of restaurants. Yes. You know. Um, and you're good at that. Well, but I, I don't get a free meal for it. So right. It, so it's kind of I feel more fair to be honest. 
So I did write book reviews for blog her, uh -huh. and I was going to do that. Right. Because apparently I, I criticized all three books because I thought they all sucked. And they told me, you know, they didn't be right. But I try to be fair about it. Like, here is what's good about it. But, you know, apparently you have to write all the positive ones as part of their book review team. So. Yeah, and I just want to clarify, I don't want anyone to take away that what I said earlier about like my return on investment versus like the first thing I read I don't want anyone to think like, well, I'm not going to go after blocks and then I'll just go after the <laughs> Because one thing about blocks is a lot of times you, maybe you didn't sell a lot of books after that first post, but sometimes you find like an advocate in that blogger mm -hmm. and then every time like, I, there are some people on Twitter that, like, every time someone says, what book would you they always say my book. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's, like, something that, you know, when you can't buy, you don't get that in, like, I'm sure Tony Orr would necessarily do that because you've got, a hundred, you know, a thousand books. For you, right. So. Right. And it's just kind of like, you know, I'm, I'm a fundraiser. So, I mean, when we talk about, you know, donors to, a, to our cause, we, we, talk, we talk about people who are... You know, not not to get preaching, whatever, but evangelists for our cause. You know, um, bloggers and authors want to find that person who is an evangelist for our book. You want to find that person who is so passionate about what you're writing about or about your fan. Um, I have you know my own favorite authors. Um, you know, I happen to uh, you know adore um, this. Of one young adult author named uh, Beth Kephart. She has become a friend and um, some and a, and a mentor to me. Um, I our relationship has, has grown because of blogging. She writes a daily blog every day. She's a Philly girl. Um, and really, when I, and I knew about her because before the blog, but you know, I've also known about her, or I've known about her, you know more um, because of the blog. But again, it goes it goes back to you know commenting on the blogs or you know and um, just developing that relationship. And when that happens, it's really cool. I mean, so when they you know retweet that, um, that's that's kind of deep. Um, we have we've got five more minutes. Um, if we have um, any other final questions from anybody else who I did not get to? Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. Both you have multiple books. This is this was my first yeah, one. I've got two more manuscripts out right now that are circulating with publishers. And you're both on the other one. Oh yeah. I'm, yeah. Every, one of the things I, available I every one of the things I do if I read the book and I like it, I'll go on the other side and I'll look to see what you know their backlist is on there. Mm -hmm. And many times without even having any kind of help, depending on how the pricing model is on some of the backlist. And just a couple of weeks ago, I went on looking for one specific book of an author that writes about this region and uses historical fiction. Mm -hmm. And it's very good at putting real historical, you know, situations and events that happen here in Info Globe and like Sixth Avenue, the internet fiction. Right? And uh, I found myself, because the way they price the models on the back of the book, I bought the whole back of over $10. I'm curious, does the Amazon drive how authors reprice on the back of or to I, You self-published, right? Yeah. So I, she, she would yeah. have more influence over than I would. Yeah. I, like even, like, I step, like I could set my own prices. And I'm not sure. I'm not sure how they do the backlist for all other authors. Right. But I know just like I mean I know a lot of people that had you know like the publishing company deals and every like every one of almost every one of them I know said okay you don't make any money until after your third book. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and I, I mean there are obviously exceptions to that rule mm -hmm. but for pretty much just like the average writer um, because you know the sales aren't that high but once you have like a bunch of books out then like you said people are more likely to go back and read, read all three of your books. Exactly. Yeah, and I know it, it, where you want to chime in with that, but um, I and you you can also put like several other things on Amazon. I have a very very short short story on Amazon right now. It's ninety nine cents, mainly because I would put like 
the hell? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's meant to be something that, you know, if you're waiting for your kid at gymnastics practice and you don't want to talk to the other parents and, you know, you're, you just kind of want to, like, hide behind your Kindle or, if you, you know, I mean, I'm that parent. I, I don't want to socialize, you know. I, I download something quick to read for 10 minutes and whatever. It's 99 cents. Okay? It's not like a book. But um, when I, I have something else that I'm planning to release in January. That's going to, that is going to be great, the free, this short story, when I release that, the collection of essays of thinking about doing up. It's a collection of autism mass progress essays based on my blog um, with Sun. Um, that short story is going to be free. A couple others will be free too as a way to get people interested maybe in the collection. So, um, and that, that's part of the Kindle um, so direct select program or whatever that's called. Are you, are you familiar with Renee Brown? Yeah. Okay, yeah. well now everybody knows it. Renee Brown is. Um, she's like, well, I guess, I write well, She's buddies with Oprah now. Um, her first book came out like 10 years ago, and nobody has any clue who she was. Then, you know, and she's written several books, but her latest book is called Darren Greatly. When that one came out, she was friends with, you know, I think actually she became friends with Oprah after Darren Greatly. Around that time. Um, but now her old books are selling. Oh, that's nobody was talking about the old book that she wrote when she wrote that 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so she yeah, that's like Gone Girl, too. Yeah, yeah, no one was talking about yeah, she had, that. Was, I think that was yeah. her third book, and that's the same thing. Huh? That's exactly. Yeah, so I mean, it can happen, and so just think of it as a platform and um, as a way to grow. Uh, we need to wrap up, so um, so I'm closing, I think that, you know, Burke is absolutely a town that loves books. We are ranked fourth um, in the most literate city in the United States. Um, so let's based on Amazon rankings and all kinds of other marketing sales crap. But I think that, you know, that says something. I think we are passionate about this. Um, again, I mean, we have a newspaper that really promotes books. And I think that we have a culture here that loves that loves. Um, Books too, and I think we have some great talented authors. We have some, you know, here in the room. I am really very so grateful for, to JJ and to Lori for being here um, and giving up part of their Saturday to be here. So thank you so so much. Um, and I hope that everybody you know got something out of this. And whether you're a book blogger or a wannabe book blogger or an author. Um, so, um, so thank you all for coming, and I'm going to take a picture of all you guys just before, okay. so I can post it on there. So thank you guys so much. Yay! So, okay. Um, so thank you guys for coming. Uh, I'll be around at lunch the rest of the day if you want to grab any questions. And, um, I know that they have to go, but um, thank you all so much. <laughs>